Hi physics fam, we are going to do a horizontal projectile problem where we are solving for the speed at which it was thrown. So we have a rock thrown horizontally from a 100 meter high cliff and it strikes the ground 90 meters from the base of the cliff. We are trying to figure out the speed at which it was thrown. And again, the key here is that it was thrown horizontally. So we know that we're just looking for the X velocity. So our height is 100 meters and we know that it is going to hit the ground at 90 meters away from the base of the cliff. So as usual, we are going to make our X and Y chart for all of our variables. So when we fill everything in, um, our X initial position is going to be zero meters. Our Y initial will be 100 meters. When we look at our final X position, that will be the 90 meters. And now our Y position is going to be zero meters. We can fill in our acceleration in the X direction being zero meters per second squared because we have nothing that's impacting our uh, acceleration there. Um, and then we have negative 9.8 meters per second squared for our Y acceleration. Our initial X velocity is what we are solving for, so that is unknown, but our initial Y velocity is going to be zero meters per second. Again, because the rock was said to have been thrown horizontally. We don't know either of our y, um, X or Y final velocities. Um, and we don't know time. But again, we do know that time is going to be the same for both the x and the y direction. So we are looking to solve for our initial x velocity. We um, can look at the entire x column and realize we are going to need time in order to solve for this. So just like um, most problems, we're going to need to solve for time in the other direction. So we can look at the y list of variables and identify that we need to use our longest kinematic equation y equals y initial plus our initial y velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. So we can solve for our time here and once we do we can plug that into the x direction and then use that to then solve for initial x velocity. So our final y position is zero our initial y position is 100 meters. We know that our initial y velocity is zero, so we can get rid of that term entirely. And then we have one half of negative 9.8, so we're gonna go ahead and change that to negative 4.9 and multiply that by t squared. So we can move the 100 to the other side, negative 100 equaling negative 4.9 t squared. And then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by negative 4.9. So that will leave us with 20.41 on the left and t squared on the right. So taking the square root of that, we are left with a time of 4.52 seconds. Again, if you round slightly differently than I do, that's totally fine. So now that we have our time, we can use the exact same equation. Um, to find our initial velocity. So we can use x equals x initial plus initial velocity in the x direction times time. I'm going to go ahead and not even include the last term for this equation because we know the acceleration is zero. So we can go ahead and leave it at that. So we have 90 over here and we know that our x initial position is zero. We're solving for our initial velocity in the x direction, and we're using the 4.52 seconds that we just solved for. So we can go through and divide 90 by 4.52, and we should end up with 19.92 meters per second for our initial x velocity.